on this episode of Team Pilipinas. Majority of the NSAs and the athletes are willing to be vaccinated. Vaccination. Will it be required of all athletes before the SEA Games? Our first virtual roundtable. EJ Obiena has been flying high in Europe. Is he ready for Tokyo? I don't want to have that, that, um, that slight mistake or flaw to be my, my, my demise coming to Olympics. Jasmine Alcaldi talks about the challenges of training for the Olympics under the restrictions of quarantine. No one has been really checking up on me. I haven't been told, you know, what I should do, what I can do. So it's very discouraging. And we look back on the career of two-time Mr. Universe and SEA Games medalist, Master Don Don Cortuna. Kung nag-ambisyon kayo, hindi yung puro ambisyon, gagawin nyo rin. Welcome to Team Pilipinas. My name is Sal Guevara. The Philippine Sports Commission plans to request the Philippine Olympic Committee to vaccinate all the national athletes competing for the Hanoi Southeast Asian Games. What are the pros and cons of this move? Over a year after COVID-19 blanketed the world, Philippine sports continues to reel from its crippling effects. As cases soar, the country's top sports bodies may implement a no vaccine, no training policy for national athletes to the 2021 Southeast Asian Games in Hanoi. Team Pilipinas spoke with various sports stakeholders to know their stance on the landmark new policy. We are now joined by POC Executive Board Member and Muay Thai Association of the Philippines Secretary General, Ms. Pearl Managilod. Ms. Pearl, magadang hapon and welcome to our show. Hi, Nisi. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me here in Team Pilipinas na show. Um, and I'm always happy to be back with, with, with you. Ma'am, mm. uh, there are reports that PA, PSC may recommend a no vaccine, no training policy because COVID-19 cases continue to soar in the country and people testing positive for the virus are getting closer to home. And it's no secret that Filipino athletes have not been spared. Uh, do you think this is the right remedy, especially that the inoculation campaign is at its early stages? Um, you know what? I understand the concern you know, of, of PSC when it comes to the safety of the athletes. We've been in this pandemic for more than a year now. And... I mean, their cases have been rising, bumaba last year, and now it's back up again. Um, I think it's we have to be more proactive, really, with our approach, with our strategies, that rather than being reactive about it. Vaccines won't really stop COVID, right? It will mitigate the risks. It will lower the symptoms, but it will not totally eradicate the, the, the virus. And even with the vaccines on hand, even if the athletes are inoculated, we still have to practice um, um, safety protocols, right? Health health protocols. So um, having that policy really, I think, would defeat the purpose of having a bubble training. Because <laughs> we want a bubble training because we want it to be in a controlled environment. And what does that mean? Having a controlled environment means that we are um, limiting the external variables that can, you know, that can... Um, affect the training that can affect the athletes. Um, it will we'll be able to monitor and in a way, a way manipulate the outcome of, of that controlled environment. So having that bubble training means that in a way they are safe. I mean, we're not completely 100% mm -hmm. um, bulletproofing the athletes when they're in the bubble training, but at least we're able to control the, the variables around it. There are small things that we can do to make sure that the bubble training can push through even without the vaccine. So, you know, we can set up a COVID monitoring team, you know, like 
we're in there's a team talaga a task force that would monitor all the athletes um they can have a dedicated line where an athletes can consult call them if they have any problems i honestly think a lot of athletes are not aware of how serious this is or kung may vaccine man they might think na oy okay na safe na ako i don't need to practice anything anymore so i think a big part of it really is um information awareness let's look at the best practices na lang of our Southeast Asian neighbors. They never stopped training. If they were able to do it, I'm sure we can adapt the same practices that they've had to make sure that the athletes can go back to their to their training already. To me, POC is about ensuring that the athletes will be able to follow that original timeline for training in order for the country yeah. to eclipse its performance from, last, from the last SEA Games. Meanwhile, yeah. to me, PSC is concerned about the health and wellness or the health of the health and well-being of the athletes. As a member of the POC who also holds a position as part of an NSA, where do you draw the line? And how will these two agencies meet halfway? Um, yeah, I don't think it's fair to say that they're at the opposite end of the spectrum. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they are both concerned with the safety and wellness of the athletes. I'm sure President Bambol Tolentino also has the best interest of the athletes in mind, right? Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's very possible that both parties come up with... with um, with strategies, you know, they can work together, they can partner together so that they have all the resources that they have on hand. Um, you know, we've already been given guidelines someone by the CDC, by the WHO, you know, how to, to manage these, the, these risks. And I think really, it's just a matter of implementing and coming up with, with um, a framework that everyone can follow, um, plans and strategies that people can, that the NSAs, the, the athletes, and the coaches can follow to make sure that you know, we are safe, but at the same time, we are also um, on track with our training for the SEA Games. We have to catch up <laughs> for mm-hmm. almost a year in other countries. And... You know, I think we should just really be more proactive about it. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, we also have to work closely with other agencies, I guess, you know, like MSAS or the regional IATF, if possible, mm-hmm. to make sure that you can go in the bubble training. It follows all the protocols. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're not. Fire safety and training, they can go hand in hand. Man. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It doesn't mean we're sacrificing the safety if you go back to training. It doesn't mean that we have to sacrifice training if you want the safety. Because I think we can, you know, work well together. What do you think are the pros and cons about getting vaccinated? I'm all for vaccinations. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> just to be clear. It, you know, <laughs> yeah, just to be clear, I'm not. I want to be vaccinated. Because um, a vaccine, someone, it's not just about protecting yourself, right? It's also about protecting the people around you, especially the, the vulnerable. Um, so I'm really hoping that, you know, we could have the rollout much sooner than expected. May balita na dadating yung Moderna. Mm-hmm. by May or June and, you know, the other vaccines arriving in July. Mm-hmm. So we're hoping that the athletes can be, can be prioritized. Mm-hmm. Remember, pros, you protect people. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to reach this herd mm-hmm. immunity that everyone's talking about, that everybody has, like 70% now has to get vaccinated, um, you know, it will give everybody a peace of mind. Um, but again, there's also that risk that, you know, people might be complacent and stop practicing mm-hmm. Um, hygiene lab. The cons really is just because this is such a novel um, virus, right? We don't really know a lot about it. So even the vaccine itself is just on its what? Phase three of clinical trials. So we don't really know the long-term effects. So all in all, I'm all for it. Ma'am, as both an officer of the Muay Thai Association of the Philippines and the POC, of course, you get to interact with athletes on a regular basis and know their thoughts. But I'm curious to know, how, what's the opinion of athletes when it comes to the topic of vaccination? Are they open to being inoculated or, or some of them, or are they having second thoughts about it? You know what? I actually raised that question when I had the cluster meeting with, for the SEA Games. Mm-hmm. And majority of the NSAs and the athletes are willing to be vaccinated. Um, there was no doubt about that. Uh, so what we're doing now really is 
we're going to organize a webinar, Attorney Agra and I, because we're the DCDMs for the SEA Games, we're going to organize a webinar that will inform the athletes of, you know, the pros and cons of the vaccines um, and what they should do after and all the things involved around it. Um, yung iba lang, I think they're a bit hesitant because yun nga, they don't know how it's going to affect their performance. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. or how it's going to affect their bodies. But mm -hmm. all in all, they're, they're all willing to be inoculated. The POC and the PSC are doing their best efforts to provide what's needed at the moment. Given the difficult cir circumstances, how optimistic are you that the country will shine in Hanoi for the bien biennial games? You know what? I have full confidence in the athletes. Because I know that athletes in the Philippines have a lot of pride. They are not afraid. You know, they will fight to the end. They will fight to their death just to make sure that they get the medal. Um, but with the preparations, I mean, I'm still hoping we can still make it. Because I mean, they've been training, man. Right? It's not like they completely stop. But. Um, I'm very hopeful. I'm very hopeful and optimistic that we'll at least be in the top three, you know, for the SEA Games, if not the number one or number two, at least top three. Because um, President Bamble has carefully chosen the, the sports that will participate. He has, mm -hmm. uh, you know, carefully selected the athletes that will, will represent the country. So those that will represent us are, are you know, have very big chances of, of winning medals. The deadly virus has broken communion, collapsed community, and fractured solidarity. But the PSC and POC refuse to cower in the face of adversity, choosing to work hand in hand to safeguard our Filipino athletes. At the end of the day, the goal remains the same, to live, heal, and win as one. Nisi Casiano, sumasaludo sa Atletang Pilipino. Jasmine Alcaldi is determined to make one final splash in the Olympic Games. But how hard is it to train for a swimming competition when you can't even use a pool? This is Team Pilipinas on PTV4 and I am with our Olympic swimmer Jasmine Alcaldi. Thank you Jasmine for your time. Um, how are you doing and how is your training looking like uh, itong panahon ng lockdown? Hi, Sal. Um, I'm happy to talk to you. I've missed you. Um, so far, <laughs> just at home trying to do the most that I can with what I have. Pero before this ECQ, um, I feel so proud of myself for being able to kind of get into a routine of swimming and doing weight uh, gym work and dry land work, which is um, land work. Um, incorporated into my routine, kind of around making the most of the situation. Even though here up sometimes I would swim from Las Piñas, I would drive to Marikina, but you know, it's dedication. So I'm happy with that. With the CCQ, we're back to square one. So dito lang muna sa bahay, working out. Pero every day I work out. So I think better than wala. <laughs> Why Marikina? Because they have a, there was a time na walang open a swimming pool and there was a facility there na was open with a gym facility, limited people. So luckily me and a teammate, we were able to hear of that place. So for the most of 2020, last year, that was my training base. I would go there four times a week to swim and then gym. So yeah, pero ngayon... Um, well, before ECQ this year, mas marami na nag-open up. So, I've been swimming closer to Las Pinas now. Right, right. So, I'm pretty sure it must be a really challenging time mm -hmm. to be, you know, to be staying on top, staying in shape, but you also have to be creative. So, um, what's, what are your and your coach's plans to prepare, say, for the Olympics for the SEA Games and what is the current situation and what are the current challenges that you and your coaches are facing right now? So I'm lucky enough to be able to get to train with my coach some days. We meet at a swimming pool in Cubao. See, I'm all over Manila. Um, and we have made a training plan where, um, you know, towards my goals. It's very limited now because of the situation. I removed a lot of my events, focusing on one or two. 
and we've been practicing doing race simulations and we're doing our part. So, um, yun lang in regards to competing, I haven't competed since SEA Games 2019. It's obviously mostly because of COVID, uh, the pandemic, sobrang limited, where I can go um, limited lang din yung places that accept tourists to compete. Mm-hmm. And it's very difficult to work towards the Olympic qualifying. My, my last time to get to try was the SEA Games. And now, you know, I, I'm a little not confident. Or I have never trained for one thing in my life. It's usually a lot of different events. So ever since the pandemic, I'm just focused on one thing. And I was very lo- much looking forward to see, thinking out like, maybe, maybe there will be magic. But yun lang, wala lang opportunity to do so. I'm trying my best to, to see where I can go. Um, and that's, it's just, that's it. It's just me. I don't have any help on parang figuring out ways to see how I could qualify or join any qualifying tournament for the Olympics. So yun lang yung, I don't know, it's difficult. Laluna as a local athlete based here in the Philippines, you would think na the federation, your federation understands what you're going through and the struggles of not just training, but also trying to compete. To say, mm-hmm. with this situation, where can we go? It's only limited. And then, yun nga, yun pa yung mga malalayo. In terms of the magic that you were mentioning, what kind of magic is it that you're looking for? And also, how does that make you feel about keeping your hopes up towards the Olympics? So what are the chances that you have? What? How does that make you feel about how yeah. high your chances are? To be honest, right now, I feel like my chances are very low because parang no one has been really checking up on me. I haven't been told, you know, what I should do, what I can do. So it's very discouraging. Although, Shempre, a part of me is a fighter. I still want to try to see if I could make it. So the magic that I'm talking about is, you know, in a better world, in a world where, you know, people actually help our local athletes here. It would be great to see, because for me, to be able to be training for one event, I have never done it in my life. So that yun lang yung silver lining ng pan, pandemic. It kind of forced me to focus on what, on one thing, and like give give it my all. So yeah. yun lang yun. But to be honest, just very discouraged because I can't see. You know, I can't try. I don't know. We tried to do it here with my coach, na parang testing, testing lang. But it doesn't mean anything when it's not you know, an Olympic qualifying tournament. So, yun lang. <laughs> well, given that you are amazing for trying to train at top level in spite of a lot of uncertainties around you. So, wish you the best of luck, Jasmine, and uh, we'll definitely follow you on your trainings and your preparation for the big tournaments. And hopefully, you know, you get the support and also you know, the circumstances will allow you to uh, do what you're set out to do. And thank you very much for your time. You are watching Team Pilipinas. I'm Boyet Sison. On this edition of Team Pilipinas, we have the National Training Director of the Philippine Sports Commission, Coach Mark Velasco. Well, Coach, our government has been putting in uh, different uh, quarantine restrictions every now and then. At the start of the year, how, how did that affect your timetable? Um, actually, it affected uh, everybody's timetable, not just the sport. Before the ACQ was hit, we were able to send uh, all of the athletes home. Uh, we did have a few athletes who had difficulty in traveling, and we had them in field sports for a few weeks. Uh, but we, generally, we were able to send them back home. Um, for, for, for us, I think, obviously, the Olympics was postponed. So we moved our... Our timetable. Second, uh, we had difficulty with our budget. Uh, much of our budget 
uh, to the tune of 1.3 billion was uh, being used for part of the the covid uh, fund that was used last year and obviously our, our source of fund the NSDF from Pagcor uh, nag deplete po siya kasi obviously uh, casinos were shut down and uh, no earnings from the Pagcor but slowly but surely at the middle of last year at the end of the year medyo nakaka remit na po yung Pagcor and we're, we're eternally grateful na hindi pa rin nila nakalimutan yung PSE as part of their uh, man as part of their contribution to the NSDF. Our focus then by that, that during that time was to get the Olympic program going kasi hindi nga nag-stop yung Olympics so it was just postponed but we we feel that uh, we still have to continue with the Olympic program. So we were granted uh, uh, permission by the IATF to continue with the Olympic training hence we were able to do series of bubble trainings for Olympic uh, athletes. Were you even thinking of maybe a no vaccine, no training policy for the PSC in, in, in all of this? I think at the moment that would be difficult to quantify, but we still are, and, and we are uh, studying that option. But uh, obviously, the, 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 the key component of that no, vac- no vaccine, no training, or no competition is the vaccine. And the vaccine has, uh, uh, you know, the government has a priority program for our vaccine. And we only go where the government uh, brings us. We are studying the possibility if the vaccine is there, um, much safer. Obviously, not, not, not taking anyone's right not to have vaccinated or to have somebody vaccinated. We still have to have that. But obviously, that's a layer of protection that we encourage our athletes to have. And, uh, you know, some of our athletes are actually vaccinated because some of them or a good number of them are part of our uh, armed forces of the Philippines and some of them are frontliners. Tuloy na, tuloy na ang Olympiada, no? Uh, ano, ano mga, how, can you give us a uh, an update on how the trainings is in general? I mean, for for all the athletes that are supposed to be preparing for that. Well, uh, uh, the good news is a, a good number of our athletes uh, are training outside. Uh, obviously, uh, we have uh, EJ Obiana in Italy. Okay. Heidi is Heidi Lynch, where, where she just qualified for the Olympics. By uh, formalizing her entry to the Asian uh, weightlifting, uh, she she was training in Malaysia. Of course, Sikalo Yulu, which are best chance to have multiple medal. He's training in Tokyo for how many years now? Uh, we have a, a number of judoka in Tokyo. Yuka Sasso, who's doing well in her rankings, and and if you, if the Olympics were to be held now she she should be qualified together with bianca who's uh, above top 40 so you know a, a lot of good things are are really coming together in fact I, even i think miss um, akiko thompson even some of the sports personality i think this is the 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 the, the, the where in our athletes have the best chance to win a medal. This is, I think, the best class of athletes that is going to the Olympics. So uh, it's not just the sheer number of them going to the Olympics. It's, it's the quality of the athletes that we are sending to the Olympics. For PSC, uh, working together with the POC and the Chef de Mission, we are doing our best basically to provide them with everything they need. So PSC right now is, is really a uh, focus on our uh, the Olympic athletes, that's that's why I think uh, Chef de Mission Mon Fernandez wanted the training of the Sea Games to maybe start a little bit. Uh, you know, I think by June, seguro by that time everything for the Olympic program is already set. So right now, kasi we're 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 still uh, working uh, through our Olympic program. This is the lineup that has a lot of uh, chances to get a, a at least a medal in the Olympics and we never had uh, multiple medals. Looking at uh, the timetable vis-a-vis uh, the games itself, uh, when do you, uh, when are you planning to get uh, the contingent to go? If they need to be there as early as four weeks, six weeks, the PSE is very, is ready to 
uh, accommodate that. Uh, in fact, I think it would be more prudent also on the part of our athletes to be there earlier because we might, we might not know if there's a uh, quarantine clearance we have to do if an athlete gets infected like few days before she, he or she flies to, to Japan. That would be very difficult. But if the athlete is earlier, then we have more leeway for adjustment and even to um, do some intervention. So uh, we made sure that the POC and the NSAs who are going to the Olympics, uh, we, we made sure that to tell them that the PSC is really willing to support them. There is a good number of them who are abroad and we are, I cannot pinpoint the exact number. Uh, the only ones we have for the Olympic program is training here at the moment or the our archery um we have our fencing uh, team who both have their bubble the archery is now in Dumaguete uh being hosted by Mayor Remolio and uh, they have a very good uh, program there they they're being uh, well provided for very supported by the LG and obviously uh fencing si Mayor Richard Gomez who's the mayor of Ormog and also the president of fencing so once we have them fly to their qualifications, some of them has to come back to the Philippines. But for example, for uh, uh, EJ Obienya, I don't, um, I'm not sure if it's practical for him to go to the Philippines. Uh, I think he has to go through uh, directly to Japan. Uh, some of the athletes has to go through directly to Japan. I think they have a better chance of um, clearing uh, quarantine procedures or clearing uh, COVID procedures if they come from the other countries. What about the SEA Games? How, how is the synchronicity for, uh, for, the, for our athletes vis-a-vis -vis these two tournaments? The Philippine Olympic Committee pegged a number, I think 626 for the actual participants for the SEA Games. Uh, but we're looking to support that around... 800 athletes because some of them have to, of course, train with the training partner. Some of them are ranked equally and, uh, you know, the NSA has a prerogative to, to select, uh, has have the final selection of which athletes are able to send. Um, right now, the, the, there won't be any synchronization, so to speak, because we are focused on the Olympics. Now, obviously, we don't want them to start as early as possible, you know, on their bubble because being in a bubble is a really entirely different animal. You, you cannot really put the athletes in one area and have them confined in that space for six months or seven or eight months. That, that's too long for them. For you as an athlete yourself, how difficult is it, is it to train for a major, for a major competition with, with, with this scenario around us? For the athletes, they're not, they're not immune to that. Uh, in fact, they are more prone to uh, the, 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 the bad effects of uh, being confined in, in, in one space uh, because they, they put so much effort physically and other things that also mentally they have to be well taken care of. Now, uh, we have... Uh, you know, we have uh, deployed our sports psychologists who from time almost every day have to get in touch with our athletes, athletes regardless if they feel the need to talk or not. But uh, I just want our, our psychologists to touch base with our athletes. Our psychologists are working closely with their coaches. So, so for me, I think I, I still believe that the, the, the Filipino athletes have better mental fortitude than any other athlete in the world. And I completely agree with you. Thank you very much, Coach Mark Velasco, for joining us today. And the best of luck to you and all our Filipino athletes. Thank you. Thank you, Wyatt. Thank you. That was Coach Mark Velasco, the National Training Director of the Philippine Sports Commission. I'm Boyet Sison. EJ Obiena has been flying high in Europe. Is he ready for Tokyo? I don't want to have that, that, um, that slight mistake or flaw to be my, my, my demise coming to Olympics. Hello, my name
My name is Dennis Principe and this is Team Pilipinas and we are so honored this afternoon dahil makakasampo natin straight from Italy ang isa po sa ating uh, Olympians in the upcoming uh, Tokyo Olympics, Paul Walter E.J. of Vienna. Uh, ano na yung pinagdadaanan mo ngayon and uh, anong level na ng training uh, tayo considering that you are preparing for the upcoming Olympic Games which is just a few months away from now. Um, as an athlete, um, you know, training goes on. Uh, right now, we're preparing for a competition uh, this coming May. I think it's the later part of May. So that's the plan to actually start the outdoor season there, you know, to kind of get the competitive side of things again. And so I think now we're not really in the full run yet. So we're doing like some 12 step short runs and working on the technique, working on getting stronger, getting a little bit faster, you know, as as always, you know, what we do uh, during this period. Um, so far, I feel healthy. I feel good. Um, you know, a little pain here and there, which is part of being an athlete. So nothing to complain, nothing to worry about. I mean, so far, I'm good. I'm just trying to stay healthy coming Olympic Games, you know. We try to maximize what we have. Um, who knows if if the plans actually went the way it 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 was planned. But... Um, sa ngayon po kasi so far okay naman, maganda naman yung preparation so I mean not completely you know we cannot do training camps here and there you know we're we're training in the same place where I usually train you know I have really nothing to complain about and I can't really tell how you know I can't really compare if the plans actually went the way I wanted to go so I'm just gonna say you know um, I'm just trying to make sure that whatever um, it's available. I'm able to maximize it. So, you know, I'm just thinking of going to Olympics right now. We're preparing for the teams and I'm hoping all the people that I need to be in the Olympics will be in the Olympics. You know, I can't really foresee what is going to happen in the near future. So I'm just staying on top of my, my toes and just being able to adapt to the situation. EJ, you mentioned about, uh, you're hoping that, uh, uh, people whom you expect to be a part of your team come Olympic time, eh, makasama mo. Uh, how crucial ito? At meron pa ba? Meron pa mga kulang na kailangan mo makasama uh, as of now? Um, as of now, to be honest, I'm trying to push for my nutritionist to be there with me, you know, so I can I can know which, you know, which meals I need to take before the competition. I think, I think we've worked so hard the past couple of years. It will be a shame if, you know, I'm going to be losing my, you know, losing that day because I didn't eat the, the right way. So I, I wouldn't really want to have that there. So I want to have my people there, my physio, my coach, my, you know, my team, the people I trust and the people who have worked with me to achieve where we, we want to, we want to be. We have this kind of chemistry as a team and I trust them. They trust me to do what I can and I trust them to do what they can. Uh, EJ, it's good that you mentioned about uh, you having uh, a team. Ano? Kasi inisip ng mga tao, Paul Volt, bakit pa? Eh, ikaw lang naman mag-isa. Uh, it's you and you alone ano? na tumatalon. No? But, but uh, siguro to, to, to give uh, honor na rin sa team members mo, can you mention ano yung mga crucial part uh, of your uh, team na sinasabi mo and sino-sino itong mga ito? Um, it's a lot, man. You know, as an athlete, uh, I said, pole vaulting is an individual sport, but, you know, we try to have a psychologist, you know, I, I can't just deal with my, you know, with the things that I need to deal with. And sometimes, you know, an outside perspective helps. And that's where Dr. Katsuga, my psychologist actually helps me a lot. And I started working with her back in 2019. And that's where I started to jump good. You know, that's the, probably the best season I have. So sports psychology is very important on my part then you know you have your nutrition that's where my uh, my nutritionist comes in you know which food i should eat before i compete you know a week before what kind of meal planning should i have this kind of training is currently heavy what kind of meal plan should i increase my protein carbs should i lessen my sugar you know these kind of things these are miss carol lafferty's job you know she she prepares the best meal plan that I could actually eat and be able to perform my best on the day, even on trainings. And then I have my physios, my osteopath, which are uh, Francesco Viscusi, 
and then uh, Antonio Guglietta. Uh, both of them are working on keeping my body, um, you know, in sync, in, in good shape, uh, because back in 2020, I had some back issues. So Antonio is the one who is keeping my, basically more on the skeletal side of things. You know, he manages how to keep my, it's weird to say my bones in a, in a good place. So yeah, it's, that's, that's how he, he does his work. And then Nico is more of a physiotherapist. So he works on the muscles and stuff. Then I have uh, Mr. James Lafferty. He basically organizes everything, you know, he plans around the team. He, he acts more like a manager, but he actually helped me rehab my knee. So, you know, with James, uh, James Pangilin and Marvin, you know, I have a lot of people, uh, right now I'm working with, I think two, three, four, I can say four or five people that's working around me, not including my coach. Of course, my coach is the most important part of that, you know, and my coach is the one who dictates, okay, today, this is going to be the plan. Tomorrow is going to be this. And then everybody, everybody part of that three team kind of works around his schedule, you know, what he wants me to do on Monday. So my psychologist would plan on how I should approach that training. And then my nutritionist would plan what I would need to eat before going to the training, what time I need to eat the thing, you know, and then my physios need to make sure that my body is able to perform the way Vitaly wants it to, to perform on that day. And my job as an athlete is to make sure that all that effort that they're giving is I'll be able to return that as well and train as hard as I can push myself to the limit and you know come the day that I need to perform I perform my best apparently talagang balak rin yung team mo and no with the way you described your team talagang it will really cost a lot ano uh, for you to become a successful olympian yeah of course you know um funny thing is uh, my coach actually told me before like to Back in his country, they used to provide, like, for a medal, a chance in the Olympics, they provide a million dollars. And that's what they actually expect to spend. And, you know, considering how the times have changed, you know, these athletes are not training back in the 40s, 50s. These athletes are training scientifically and having all those people around them actually provides them the best chance and the optimum situation to perform. And... I think that's what every country is doing, to be honest. And we look back on the career of two-time Mr. Universe and SEA Games medalist, Master Don Don Fortuna. Kung nag-ambisyon kayo, hindi yung puro ambisyon, gagawin nyo rin. The main thing is to have that that group that I ha I'm I'm working with have in sync. You know that's why I, I said like I need my group. It's like it it cannot be like okay I'm gonna change my physio coming to Olympics. That guy wouldn't know how the dynamic kind of works, and I, I don't want to have that that um that slight mistake or flaw to be my 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 demise coming to Olympics. You know that would be very very expensive virtual kind of thing. So if I take them out of where they're actually working it's not going to be it's not going to be super beneficial for me but you know coming olympic games i think that's where it really matters for them to be there in tokyo to be able to provide me the things i need when i need it and yeah um that's the most crucial part that i would really save up whatever i have to be able to make sure that my team would be there looking at your recent uh, accomplishments uh but it's easy to say that uh, you're doing really great you know, because of all, well, first of all, you um, qualified you know, as Olympics as a, talaga namang, a qualifier. Right now, I'm not focusing on the things that I don't have. Um, if I do that, you know, it's very depressing. You know, if, the, if I look at things and how it's, how it's going and how things are developing and I focus on that, that's, that's just going to put my morale really down, you know, just knowing how things are going and, you know, uh, scarcity of funding here and there. It's, you know, as my psychology said, that's part of being a Filipino athlete. And that's, that makes the journey a little bit different. Uh, but, you know, right now, if I complain, uh, then, you know, I'm already accepting defeat. 
I'm just trying to make sure that's why I'm, I'm very lucky to have these people around me that make sure that I get everything that I, I need. That's why I believe that my team actually means the best for me. You know, they, they really want me to perform my best and I owe them to train as hard as I can. And I owe them everything that I have in, inside me to be able to push myself each day in training and be able to perform. So I'm not really um, going to say like, there's, you know, there's always going to be something to, to say about how things are going, but right now I'm just focusing on the things I, I need to, to do. And I have the people that are with me, of course, it would be better if they are well compensated, but they're working and they are, you know, providing me what I need the best that they can and the best that I can, I will do whatever it is to repay whatever they have provided me. And I think that's, that's just, it's more than just being an, an athlete, you know, that's, that's being a human, that's being a person, that's being someone who has respect for my coach, respect for my, my team. You know, I, I can't just slack and be able to, or just lose morale on them. You know, I, they're, they're, they're here working to push me. So I need to push myself and just shake everything off and just focus on the task at hand. Okay. And uh, siguro, EJ, it's safe to say that the Filipino spirit talaga, yung uh, pinapakita mo uh, ngayon, uh, uh, regardless of whatever obstacles na kinakaharap mo, we're the typical Filipino, no? talagang gagawa mo ng paraan. Yeah, you know, that's, that's where we're, we're quite good. <laughs> you know, we, we just make things work. I don't know how, miraculously, we make things work. So I just need to embody that right now. So with that, uh, maraming <laughs> salamat sa'yo, Ernest John Obiena, Filipino Olympian. Meantime, again, ako po si Dennis Principe and you're watching Team Pilipinas. Maaga kasi akong nalulong sa masamang bisyo. Uh, I was 14 years old. So, naranasan ko yung mga bad vices talaga. Then, one day, umuwi ako ng province namin. Nakita ko lang yung mga, yung mga parents ko na parang nasabi ko lang bigla ano bang ginagawa ko sa buhay ko. Parang kawawa naman yung parents ko na uh, getting older na tapos I'm in dark road. <clears throat> so, I decided parang ginising lang ako ng guardian angel ko, look at your parents. Parang ganun. So I decided na when I go back to city, I will enro enroll gym. I didn't think na mag bodybuilder ako or mag, mag being uh, competitive athletes. So ginagawa ko lang yun para maiwasan ko muna yung mga visio. So, tapos uh, Nilapitan na lang ako ng kaibigan ko na in-encourage ako mag-compete ka kasi maganda yung genetic ng katawan mo, you have potential. Sabi ko, I don't have any idea. Sabi niya, turuan kita, ganito lang yan, ganyan, ganyan. So, after two years, I think least than two years, so sinubukan namin mag-compete. So, so, ano naman, pumasok ka agad sa finalist. Ayun, hanggang sa tinuloy-tuloy ko na lang. Thank you, athlete number 46, Cochuna Morello Roman Jr. From the country of Philippines. Actually, yung panahon na yun, sipag lang talaga eh. Kasi wala, wala naman kaming pira, mahirap lang kami na pamilya. Sipag lang sa workout, tapos pag, pag kung ano yung meron, yun lang talaga. Dati, bumibili kami, isang piling na saging, yun yung pagkain namin, kala namin. Akala ko, tama na yun na nutrition, pero dinaan lang talaga sa sipag. 1999, nag-compete ako ng, that's my first ever, ano, uh, Mr. Philippines competition. So, nag-champion naman ako sa, ano, sa division ko. Meron pa kaming, ano, dati, yung uh, tinatawag na paperweight division. So, doon ako nagsimula na naging Mr. Philippines. Tapos, uh, after one year, umakyat ako ng division. Hanggang sa dumating ako ng uh, welterweight. Tapos, nag-compete kami ng SEA Games. 
Nanalo naman hanggang sa uh, sunod-sunod na yun kung ano yung mga international competition ko. Tapos na-hire ako ng uh, head trainer sa Kuwait <clears throat> that time. So nag-quit ako sa Philippine team. Tapos nag-head trainer kasi medyo maganda ang offer. Doon na ako nag -ano, na mag-compete ang uh, mas higher level sa international. Na, kaugalian ko kasi na every year gusto kong ma, mag step up kung uh, gusto kong maabot yung higher level kung ano yung actually pinag pinagdesiran ko talaga yon kasi since nag-give up ko yung uh, degree ko because I am I, I am a licensed uh, marine engineer so sabi ko sige parang dito yata destiny ko masaya ako Pero panindigan ko na talagang aabutin ko yung kaya kong abutin. Ang bodybuilding kasi hindi naman porkit malaki ka or mas matangkad ka, ikaw na yung sigurado na manalo. No? Ang pinagbasihan pa rin dyan, paano mo kinumplito, paano mo iniscalp yung katawan mo from upper to lower. So tapos paano mo pinaganda yung condition mo. So yun lang, ang naka-advantage lang kasi sa atin Pinoy, Uh, maganda yung genetic at saka yung balance. So, sa kanila, oh, malaki sila pero minsan kulang yung symmetry. So, doon tayo naka-advantage. Ang maliit at siksik na Pilipino ay nagwagi sa Mr. Universe ng kamanghamanghang dalawang sunod na beses noong 2008 at 2009. at sa Arnold Classic noong 2012. Tinuruan niya rin ang ilang naging international champion. Makalipas ang ilan pang taong pamamayani, dumating na ang panahon na pinili niyang magretiro. Actually, nag-retired ako ano, noong 2018. No? Uh, Pinag-usapan namin ng matagal ng misis ko yun na uh, uh, siguro sabi niya kasi, mm, inap na siguro yun, naabot mo na yung pangarap mo na gusto mong maging Mr. Universe. Uh, not once but twice. <clears throat> siguro sabi niya, focus na tayo sa ano, for survival of living. So ayun, nagkasundo naman kami doon. Uh, turo na lang ang mga new generation. So, yun, nag-early retirement ako. My official retirement today. This is my last competition. Thank you very much, fans. For your support. Isang taong pinaghirapan ni Master Dondon ang pagpapalaki at pagpapaganda ng kanyang gym sa Taguig City nang balutin ng pandemya ang mundo. Wala kang income tapos na nagkaroon pa ng crisis na ganito, pandemic. Pero sa awa ng Diyos, namamanage naman kasi huwag mo lang isipin na... Ganyan kahirap yung, kumbaga, kagustuhan ng Diyos yan eh. Pero hindi naman ibigay sa'yo siguro yan pag wala kang uh, solusyon na uh, ibabato doon. Sa mga gustong mag-bodybuilder o yung mga newcomers, wala naman talagang mahirap kung gusto niya lang gawin talaga. So, yun lang, gawin nyo lang yung nasa puso nyo. Keep train hard. Kung nag-ambisyon kayo, Hindi yung puro ambisyon, gagawin nyo rin. And that's this week's episode of Team Pilipinas and my name is Sel Guevara. Catch us every Saturdays, 4pm, only here on People's Television para sa bayan. And always remember, we are all on the same team. We are all on Team Pilipinas. See you guys next week.